They say the candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long, and nowhere is that truer than with these iconic stars. From titans of Hollywood to R&B royalty, these are the celebs who died in their 20s. Otherwise known as the Princess of R&B, Aaliyah was an icon of the 1990s. In 2011, her boyfriend Damon Dash told Fader that people didn't just like Aaliyah, they were obsessed with her. By the end of the decade, the singer was poised for even bigger fame, too, as she was riding high on the success of one gold and two platinum albums. It wasn't just the R&B industry that Aaliyah was dominating, either. She was also turning her sights toward the big screen. Her breakout role came in Romeo Must Die, which she followed up by playing the now iconic lead role in the cult classic movie Queen of the Damned. Shortly before her death, Aaliyah told CBS that she had wanted to act since she was little, adding that, In high school, I took a bit of drama, but music was first. And I waited for the right project for the right time, and it just came together. In August 2001, Aaliyah set off to the Bahamas to shoot scenes for her Rock the Boat music video. The singer initially hesitated to get on the small plane, a twin-engine Cessna 402B, but she made it to her destination safely, shot her scenes, and proceeded to head home. Shortly after takeoff on the return journey, however, the plane crashed near the runway and caught fire. Aaliyah and eight other passengers were killed. Here's a question that many have asked since the death of Heath Ledger. Did taking the role of Joker in The Dark Knight contribute to his tragic and untimely passing? The Academy Award-winning actor was found dead in his New York apartment by his masseuse on January 22, 2008. He was 28 years old. A toxicology report would later reveal that Ledger died of an accidental abuse of prescription medications, some of which were commonly known painkillers, anti-anxiety drugs, and sleeping pills. It turned out that Ledger was undoubtedly struggling with his turn as the villainous on-screen psychopath. As his roommate and dialect coach Jerry Grunnell told People Magazine in 2017, the star was exhausted both emotionally and physically. He added that he would catch Ledger roaming the apartment late at night, and when Grenell would try to get him to go to bed, the star would merely tell him that he was unable to sleep. Contributing further to rumors about the role's impact on Ledger, Jack Nicholson, who also once portrayed the Joker, told reporters after the star's passing, Well, I warned him. Though considered a legendary artist on the West Coast rap scene, Tupac Shakur was actually born in Harlem, New York. His family struggled financially, eventually ending up in Baltimore, Maryland, where Shakur began positioning himself as a creative talent while studying at the Baltimore School for the Arts. While the school was a positive influence on the future rap mogul, his family was soon forced to move to California in order to escape their crime-filled neighborhood. California ended up being the right move for Shakur's career, however, as by 1991 he had recorded his first single, subsequently landing a record deal with Interscope Records. Shakur released four platinum albums during his lifetime. As of 2021, he sold more than 75 million albums, making him one of the top-selling artists of all time. There's no doubt that the 25-year-old Shakur would have only seen his star rise if it wasn't for his untimely death in September 1996. The rapper was in Las Vegas to watch a Mike Tyson boxing match. As he left the venue, he was killed in a drive-by shooting. The rapper's fifth album, Don Kilimanati, The Seven Day Theory, was released only eight weeks after his death, reaching number one on the charts. To this day, Shakur's murder still remains unsolved. Christopher Wallace, better known as the Notorious B.I.G. or Biggie Smalls, left a lasting legacy in the world of rap, yet he only released a single album in his lifetime. The rapper is said to have almost single-handedly reinvented East Coast hip-hop during a time when West Coast rap dominated the scene. Signed to Puff Daddy's label Bad Boy Records, Biggie released his now iconic single Juicy in August of 1994. His first album, Ready to Die, arrived the very next month. Within two months, the album was certified gold, and its success had only grown in the years since becoming quadruple platinum in 1999. Sadly, Biggie's successes were short-lived. On March 9, 1997, a mere three years since his debut album was released, the rapper was shot dead in Los Angeles. His second album, Life After Death, was set to be released just two weeks after his untimely passing. To this day, Biggie's death remains unsolved. What's more, it later turned out that the rapper was concerned for his safety during his trip to L.A. During one of his final interviews with San Francisco's KYLDFM, Biggie reflected that anyone who is as high profile as himself is bound to be a target. They're going to attack you if you're on top, you know what I'm saying? It's just your job to bob and weave, you know what I'm saying? I need the security. Fans will forever remember Nirvana as spearheading the grunge movement of the 1990s. The genre emerged as a direct response to vastly different musical stylings of the previous decade, such as the overstuffed sounds of synth pop and the colorful chaos of hair metal. At a time when the 90s youths were filled with angst, grunge was essentially a movement of rebellion. 
Kurt Cobain founded Nirvana in 1988, but it wasn't until they signed to Geffen Records in 1991 and released their second album, Nevermind, that they became the grunge icons they're remembered as today. In 1994, Cobain told Rolling Stone, It was so fast and explosive, I didn't know how to deal with it. If there was a Rockstar 101 course, I would have liked to take it. It might have helped me. Sadly, around the same time that Nirvana landed the record label, Cobain began experimenting with heroin. This was largely due to the mounting pressures of suddenly being considered a commercial act, an image that the songwriter had always fought against. On April 5, 1994, Kurt Cobain committed suicide in a Seattle, Washington home, leaving behind his wife, Courtney Love, and their daughter, Frances Bean Cobain. He was 27 at the time of his death. Janis Joplin was a rock icon, yet sadly her career in music only lasted a few short years. Born in Port Arthur, Texas, Joplin was known for her rebellious nature and love of music, often going to dive bars in Louisiana to admire her fellow artists. After a brief stint in Los Angeles in 1961, the singer moved back home to Texas, where she was enrolled at the University of Texas at Austin and joined a local band. After a few more attempts at fame, both in California and New York, Joplin joined the psychedelic rock group Big Brother, a group she would put on the map thanks to her booming vocal style. Unfortunately, Joplin's dabbling in amphetamines, heroin, and alcohol created a rift in the band. As her biographer once told the BBC, she was always going to be this skyrocket chick. She drank hard and she lived hard. The singer broke off from Big Brother in 1968 in favor of a solo career, releasing her first album the following year. The LP's mixed reception caused considerable distress for Joplin, however, and her heroin addiction only worsened. On October 4, 1970, 27-year-old Janis Joplin died of a heroin overdose in an L.A. hotel room. Her second album, Pearl, was released posthumously and ended up being the biggest hit of her career. Amy Winehouse's rise to fame and subsequent downfall occurred on show to the world, largely thanks to the relentless obsession of the tabloids and paparazzi. Snagging her big break early on in her life, Winehouse was discovered at age 16 by a friend who passed her demo tape to A&R, subsequently leading to a signing with Island Universal. Her 2003 double platinum debut, Frank, saw the singer first rise to fame, but this was also a time in which she sealed her unfortunate reputation as a proud, unstable hedonist. Winehouse's refusal to attend rehab for alcoholism in 2006 led to her most successful album to date, Back to Black, on which she even sang about her experience on the track, Rehab. Yet, as Winehouse became more popular, her behavior and addiction became increasingly troubling. The singer's friend, Tyler James, later told RNZ, There was so much expected of her when there was so much pressure to be this character, to be this Amy Winehouse, this person who'd won five Grammys. That life wasn't for her. Amy Winehouse died at her home on July 23, 2011, of accidental alcohol poisoning. She was 27. The death of another rock musician was disclosed today. Jim Morrison, 27 years old, lead singer of The Doors. Many different theories have cropped up surrounding Jim Morrison's mysterious death, yet one thing remains certain. The Doors' frontman died way too young. Morrison met the rest of his bandmates in college while studying film at UCLA, forming the legendary group in 1965. The Doors were quickly signed to a label the following year, releasing their self-titled debut in January 1967. While The Doors became successful relatively early on, Morrison's personal struggles with alcoholism negatively affected the band, with the frontman actually getting arrested twice for his onstage antics. By 1971, Morrison had moved to Paris, where he spent his time partying before meeting an untimely demise. On July 3, 1971, the 27-year-old Jim Morrison was found dead, and the reasons why are murky. Today, there are various stories circulating about how he actually died. His girlfriend, Pamela Corson, claimed that after a dinner and movie date, the couple retired to their home and went to sleep. When Morrison woke up feeling ill, he ran a bath and got in. Corson eventually found him in the bathtub, dead. On the other hand, biographer Sam Burnett claims that Morrison died of a heroin overdose in a bathroom stall of a Parisian nightclub. Since no autopsy was ever performed, his exact cause of death remains a mystery. Considering he only filmed three feature films in his lifetime, it's remarkable that James Dean has left such an impression on the pop culture landscape. Perhaps he's so well remembered due to his gripping on-screen presence, which symbolized the restless American youth of the 50s. Born James Byron Dean in Marion, Indiana, he bounced between Indiana and California in his youth, eventually dropping out of college and enrolling in Lee Strasberg's prestigious actor studio in New York. In a letter the actor wrote to his family in 1952, Dean boasted of other fellow thespians who have attended, such as Marlon Brando and Julie Harris, before writing, If I can keep this up and nothing interferes with my progress, one of these days, I might be able to contribute something to the world. 
Heartbreakingly enough, the star didn't get to contribute much more after bursting onto the Hollywood scene. The actor was a fan of fast cars, and after getting a hefty paycheck from the 1955 movie East of Eden, he bought himself a Porsche 550 Spyder. On September 30th, 1955, he took his convertible out for a joyride, getting a speeding ticket at 3.30 p.m. A mere two hours later, he collided with a sedan on the highway near Shalam, California. Dean was 24 years old when he died. River Phoenix embarked on a fascinating journey on his way to becoming one of Hollywood's most promising heartthrobs. The actor's parents were part of a Christian cult, the Children of God, even moving their family to Venezuela for a while. They eventually moved back to America in the 70s, having denounced the group and put their children to work in local talent competitions. By the time Phoenix was 10, the family was living in California, with their son having scored a number of bit TV parts. He then made his movie debut with 1985's Explorers. From there, Phoenix's career went from strength to strength. He landed the role of young Indiana Jones in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and even received an Oscar nomination for his role in Running on Empty. Yet his burgeoning career was cut short on October 31, 1993, after a trip to L.A. hangout, The Viper Room. River was accompanied by his siblings, Joaquin and Rain, and his girlfriend, Samantha Mathis, staying just under an hour before he had to be carried outside. Joaquin called 911 after seeing his brother have multiple seizures, but by then it was too late. River was pronounced dead of an accidental overdose at the age of 23. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or call SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.